Hey everyone, welcome back to Infinite Binge. We are watching Stranger Things Season 2 this week, or this episode, we are talking about Chapter 2, Trick or Treat, Freak. I'm Jake, and who else is here? Kevin. And Andrew. Oh man, this is starting to get some, starting to get some extra information in here. I gotta admit, this show is kind of hard to do the way we're doing it, where we are watching an episode and then recording this. It's really hard not to just sit there and just watch them all back to back. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy. They all end in cliffhangers. Kevin has the like. He he's like a monk. He does he doesn't get temptation. I watched Lost. Oh well, yeah, but you had to, you probably watched it like as it aired. Yeah, exactly. You you, you didn't have them all. So Ooh. I know what I know what it's like to wait. We watched uh, the uh, Twin Peaks. Yeah, well, that was years that we had to wait. Yeah, twenty five years. Uh, let's just uh, jump right in. Uh, it starts out with a flashback to, with L, with the good Mike, good goodbye Mike scene. Uh, it showed her waking upside down of the school. She's scared and searching for Mike. But she finds a little portal back to the real world. And I remember she looked in and there was like lights shining through. So she like hid for a minute. But then she used her powers to enlarge the hole. And then she uh, walked through. And then she walked over to Mike's house to see all of the uh, the government guys there. And they're all just kind of trying to keep everything hush-hush. Well, th- this is where that whole Russia conspiracy comes in. Because you kind of hear them mention Russians a little bit, and then uh, idiot Ted is like, "Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, whatever for my country or something." So we're all patriots here. Yeah, yeah, we're all patriots here. That's what it was. Yeah. I, I hope that that I hope whoever wrote that line could hear me roll my eyes from here. And then he did the salute. Oh yeah, Ted's the secret best character, guys. Nope. No, he nope. was like the absolute worst. He's the Not secret the worst. best. Uh, Almost the worst. I mean, it just, he just, it's, and the, the actor does such a good job of it. But it's yeah. just, he's written, he's, he's written poorly and like intentionally. Just the kind of the, the, the prototypical, stereotypical 80s dad. Yeah. You could replace him with a mannequin and no one would notice. Maybe they did and we didn't notice. <laughs> So yeah, the uh, the government guys are talking to the wheelers, and they set Mike down, and they're like, hey, if you see Eleven, you're going to have to tell us. And he's like, no, I'm not going to tell you anything. You guys are idiots. And then he's kind of like staring out the window, and then they think they see something, and they go search around outside the house. But Elle's gone, because she was like staring in the window. Yeah, and she's kind of all frightened and alone. She's She's out. On her own, which in in, in kind of in in late autumn, mid to late autumn, you know, it can get cold. Oh, yeah, definitely. So then, yeah, uh, it kind of cuts to, I don't want to call it the shack, but it's, I don't know, it's not, it's kind of shabby. It's the cabin in the woods. Yeah, but uh, with Elle and Hopper, and Elle dresses up as a ghost, and she startles Hopper. And to be honest, she startled me a little bit. I'm but surprised I'll... that Hopper didn't pull out a gun again because every time he gets spooked, he pulls out a gun. And screw you. Um, but yeah, so L wants to go trick or treating, um, but Hopper says Hopper kind of just doesn't want any part of it. He says that it's a risk and risks are stupid, and we are not stupid. So they come up with a compromise, and L doesn't know what a compromise is. So he kind of I I really like the way that Hopper explains it very succinctly and calls it halfway happy and then he that's kind a, of that's a good way of putting it yeah it's it, yeah yeah it's just kind of a <coughs> excuse me a really good way of uh describing it but yeah so he says they'll be back by a 515 515 515 it took when she said that that took me a minute to figure out what she meant yeah it took me a second too i was like oh wait 550 okay and then uh, from there, it cuts to uh, the Goosiers. Uh, well, it cuts to, it cuts to Will, and he's uh, his mom's freaking out because he's not in his bed, 
and it's kind of a, a recreation of the of the scene from the uh, opening, you know, the very first episode of the show. And she's like freaking around, like Will, Will. And then she opens the bathroom, and he's just standing there. And she's like, "What are you doing? Peeing?" Um, but then uh, it's it's uh, all of them in their costumes, and and it's cycling through their families, just or their their mom specifically taking pictures of him. And I will say, I laughed quite hard at the uh, part with Lucas's mom because his sister's like, "Oh, you're a nerd." And then he, he's, his mother's just like, don't don't be mean to him. And she's like, that's why you only hang around with boys or something like that. I don't know. It, it was pretty funny. I had a good laugh at that. But uh, but yeah, then then it uh, cuts to them all showing up at school, all dressed up in their uh, Ghostbusters uh, outfits. And then, uh, so I guess Will is Egon, Dustin is Ray, and Lucas and Mike are Venkman, which... Um, yeah court argue about and then Lucas brings up the point because he didn't want to be or he wanted to be Vankman and so he brings up the point that he, why he's you know or that what he shouldn't be because he's black basically and so then they're arguing and uh, Dustin points out hey we're the only people in cast and then it cuts so, to them walking through the school and everyone just laughing at them, basically, because they're the only ones in costume. Sounds like they're the only cool ones to me. They were good costumes. Yeah, they were. For 1984, um, homemade costumes, that was pretty solid. Yeah, very A solid. A working uh, trap. Yes. Voila. <laughs> uh, that goes back to Joyce... He's t- she's talking to Hopper about Will and the drawing. Basically, she's like saying it. it's like this area right here. It was like a perfect recreation, but with a giant monster. He he is quite a good drawer. He's pretty good when he's not shooting cabbages. It's a callback to the first season. Oh, yes, the cabbages. Yes, sorry. Took me a second there. Was this also the scene where they were talking about like when they were in school together? That that was a yeah. little bit later, or was that it was later? I yeah, was yeah, because um, it, it it's them here, and then it cuts to a couple other things, and and then yeah, it goes back to them, and we'll just talk about uh where they're sitting at the table, and then uh Hopper smoking, and Joyce like wants to take a a drag basically, and she coughs a little bit, and then they're reminiscing about uh, apparently they were like good friends back in high school or something, which yeah. probably would uh explain a little bit about why he's not super like into the fact that she's dating Bob. The high school nerd. So you don't think he's still seeing the librarian? Probably not. Maybe. Oh my god. Like I don't uh, know that he's called her back ever. Yep, we don't know. No, we I think we he's, do know that been, he didn't. He's been yeah. busy with some things. Uh but then they talk about how those that nothing's gonna be back to the way it was, but it, it'll get better. I think that's then, true of a lot of things that, like, when people go through trauma. I think that's just I mean, generally true. Yep, it is. Uh, that goes back to the DOE. They send someone through to replace, like, a battery or something? Yeah, it looked like some sort of part. Uh, it looked like, it was like, yeah, it's barbecued. Anyone hungry? And I'm like, oh my god, that's terrible jokes. Yeah, so, the, yeah, they you see him actually bring a camera through to the, the Upside Down SM. You think they would have done that before, but they are idiots. Yeah, well, and then, so it it explains the whole lights on the board flashing and stuff. Yeah, like you thought it was like some big major problem yeah, on the last but, episode. It turns out, no, it was just a little the fried battery, and that's fixed. So so what was it that was just like a couple of satellite or, uh, things, that lo- or like satellite dishes it looked like? Or well, it like looked like it was some sort of something. It looked, yeah, it looked like it was some sort of observation station. Yeah, they replaced that, though, and then it was back to normal. So then we get to see Nancy and Steve. They're, in the, they're studying in the library, and then Nancy thinks that she sees Barb. It's just you know, a girl with uh, short red hair like facing away from her, and you can really kind of tell that the guilt uh, of everything is eating her up. Uh, where she talks, about, she talks to Steve about how 
basically kind of what we discussed in the previous episode where her family is willing to go into all this financial ruin for lack of a better word to uh continue to look for her when they when they know the truth um and then steve tries to kind of comfort her and uh just he wants to what he really wants to do is he wants to get her mind off things uh and go to this uh go to this halloween party and then uh lucas and dustin they approach max about trick-or-treating this is kind of where where they are uh showing off their costumes uh, and everything and uh max basically is like you know i didn't know it was such an honor to go trick-or-treating with you and it's like don't you think that's a little presumptuous and then Dustin doesn't know what presumptuous means. So he goes, yeah, it is. It is presumptuous. Oh, yeah, he was like, yeah, totally. It just, I cannot believe that, uh, I can't believe how, like, that kid is smart in specific ways, but then, like, he, like, he obviously does not pay attention in English class. Yeah, well, and then that whole, like, exchange with, well, one way exchange with him and Lucas afterwards because he's like, wait, wait, what does presumptuous mean? What is presu-? And he's like chasing him down the hallway. And is it Lucas bad? Is just, and he's just like, is it bad? Son of a bitch. Because <laughs> he just, he's like basically just ignoring him. Like, I have never felt like like a single character as much as I feel like Dustin in a lot of this show. It's just like, oh, Dustin, Dustin's great. I, I, I feel like he, he's so I think that's probably partially why he's my favorite character on the show. But it's just like I I was this kid. But uh, yeah, I think from there it cuts to L watching TV, uh, flipping through the stations. And in in the first episode, so they they show on um, like the movie theater marquee uh, Terminators playing. And then in this episode, while she's flipping through the channels. Uh, they have like a little clip of the Terminator, like TV spot, which Arnold is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Cool. Yeah, is the, the Terminator. Terminator. Yeah, no, it was, it was pretty great. And then, uh, yeah, I, that kind of made me want to watch the Terminator. Yeah, I got to be honest, it did. I I had the same thought. Where I was like, yeah, I I haven't seen that in a few years. I should I should go watch that. I should Termin- watch the Terminator. Ter- yeah. Terminator one or Terminator two? Terminator one. Well, one, and then I mean, if you're gonna watch one, then. You might as well watch two right after it. Yeah, but you but you stop after Terminator two, right? What do you mean? They only made two. Okay, and that's... then they, and then they no, made then the Christian the, Bale uh, one. You watch the uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles. Oh, yeah, binge those. Tangent. What a fantastic show! Canceled. Oh yeah, far too. Gone soon. too soon. That show was great. It was, <laughs> but anyways, back to this show that is definitely we are not canceled. Discussing. Uh, it cuts to uh. Well, her going to a soap opera, and then, because obviously, you know, she doesn't interact with anyone other than Hopper now, so she's, like, trying to emulate emotions that she sees on the TV of, like, a, you know, some love love scene on, on some soap opera, and then, um, she, um, hears a squirrel outside, and, and she goes and, uh, uh, sees, or she hears a noise and sees it's a squirrel on, on the bird feeder, and then flashback to her when she was alone and, and you know, hunting. Or, well, it shows her hunting using her mind, which mind powers for hunting. It's a little a little bit of cheating. I mean, she she had to eat. She did have to eat, but... Yeah. Did she use her mind to start the fire, too? That, I would assume so. I don't know how she would have started that. But, yeah, so... Sh- Matches? Yeah, well, maybe. But yeah, cooking up squirrel, and then some hunter comes out, and he's like, are you okay? You know, asking her some questions. And then she lifts the flaming log out of the fire and flings it, like, with her mind at his head and just knocks him out cold. And just, like, steals his hat and jacket and then runs off. I am I'm good now. It was pretty brutal. And then Eugene's pumpkins are dead now, guys. Everyone's Someone pumpkins else. are dead. Not just you, everyone's pumpkins are dead. Someone really hates these pumpkins. I feel like there's a, a jerk joke in there. Yeah, I was trying to make it. 
It was a bit he of a stretch. He hates these pumpkins. Max was late again. Billy indicates that it's her fault that they're stuck in Indiana. And then he, I don't, you said he acts like he's going to run over the Goosers. I think he was going to run over the Goosers. He was going to. To what we were saying before, Ted is not the worst character. This older brother. Oh, he's the worst. Seems to be the worst character. Things may change. Oh, Max saves their lives when she pulled the wheel. Yeah. She saved the lives of all of them. Just to, again, another quick tangent. Those Camaros are super slow. Is this so they it wouldn't have been able to do any damage to him. It would have, but I mean, slow. I I just hate those bad car things in in movies and shows. But anyways, so right, he cuts back to to Hopper and he's checking out the the pumpkins and he, he's making sure they're dead. Guess what? They they're, they're dead. dead. Oh, they're dead. Then yeah, and then he finds a tree and he like sticks his hand in it. It comes out all slimy. Yeah. And then he, he gets on like the walkie talkie and he's, he's like telling his deputy saying, Hey, don't touch this stuff with your hands. We don't know what it is. And, and in the background course. you see the other guy t- touching the stuff with his hands instantly. Yeah. Oh man, it's just those two I, I'm trying to think of the appropriate term for the for those two cops. And I'm like I'm They're Simpsons cops. Yeah, they are. Well, but they're both Wiggum. Kinda, yeah. It's just like they're they're both. I feel like the because they're, they're the not two, that bad. They're. I mean, if one of them was eating donuts off of a pistol, I wouldn't. Especially that that white cop is dumb as. Like he he is Wiggum. Yeah, I feel like, and I feel like the other. I'll give you that one. The the I feel like the. I, I wish I knew their names. Um. I feel like the the black copies. He's 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 good. He's um he's definitely better. But I think he's, I think his I they his don't give take a crap is low. Seriously. Yeah, I th- but I think his give give a crap is kind of low. Like he doesn't th- he, like he's a little bit too no non no nonsense about some of this stuff. Like if he ever if they ever tried to bring him into the fold, I don't think he would be able to to deal with it. So Will uh, doesn't like that Jonathan is coming with him to go trick or training, but kind of at the last minute, Jonathan decides to let Will go on his own. Um, and like uh, Bob had let Will and Jonathan take the the video camera with them. I hope so, it doesn't suck. Oh God! No, I take it back. He's the worst character in this show oh, with those Bob. dad jokes. So, uh, but then so. Will goes on his own. He's going to pick him. Jonathan's going to pick him up at nine. Uh, then Jonathan decides that he's going to go get sheet faced. Uh, and when he gets there, or before he gets there, uh, they cut to it. And Billy is the new keg king. And Nancy decides that uh, now is the appropriate time to just start drinking and drinking everything. Oh, yeah. Party time. Uh, when it was, they were saying that Billy was the new keg king, he got it right into Steve's face. Yeah, because I think Steve was the old keg king. Yeah, and Steve didn't really seem to care. Steve's turned around. He's a good man now. He's a nice young man. I'm glad you've, you've done a 180 uh, on Steve. Well, let's be real. He has, has he not? Well, it was always his friends. His friends were the problem. Yeah. He was he was hanging around with the bad crowd. But could you imagine season one, episode two, Steve? If somebody came up to him and did that, he'd go, hold, hold my my cup, and then he would try and one up him. Yep. Or his friends would egg him on and and like kind of push him and say, "You gonna take that? You gonna you gonna you gonna let him be the keg king?" Yeah. But uh, as they're partying, it then does cut back to. Uh, vampire Bob, and he throws on some nice uh, Dolly Parton, Kenny Rogers, you know, tries to get Joyce up and dancing, but she's just still, you know, just really worried about Will and stuff. Uh, and then, you know, they're kind of doing that, and, and Bob brings up maybe moving to Maine, and confirmed Radio Shack. He mentions yep. if moving up to to Maine that there's a Radio Shack right down the road, and he could he could probably get a job there. 
Sounds I think like he, he doesn't own a Radio Shack. Yeah, just works sounds, at one. Well, it sounds like his parents uh, maybe run the Radio Shack in Maine. Or or maybe he's like a, a manager at one or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then it cuts to... Uh, or, or And then, you know, their doorbell rings, so he's excited about to go give out candy. He opens the door, and then it cuts back to the Goosers um, walking away from a house uh, where... What is the lady called? Co- exterminators. She's like, oh, aren't you a bunch of cute little exterminators? And then I mean, she's, she's, not, not, in, she's, she's, she's not... She's not wrong. wrong. Well, they I know. They ghosts. I know, but you know how uh, how they are. I mean, that was kind of the point of Ghostbusters, is that they would turn, like, the super, like, scientific job into they were exterminators. That was kind of the problem with the remake. But then, anyways, food is discussed. They start talking about top three candies. Again. And how Dustin loves Three Musketeers. Everyone else kind of seems to hate him. I mean, I get where everyone else is coming from. I'm a Snickers guy myself. So, well, Snickers or, like peanut butter but anyway i mean i have a top three i don't know about you guys fast break number one that's all i'll say peanut butter cups twix and a whatchamacallit oh man like if, but you can't get the whatchamacallits in like the snack size the fun size no, they, you can't you can no you can't no, oh okay i was gonna say because that's that's kind of like for me the thing it's like what are you likely to get and but at least with like the the reese's cups you would get like the the quote unquote fun size or snack size was usually they were either the the really small ones or the regular size ones, but you you would just get one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would never get what you call it's uh, trick or treating. I'm just saying top three. I I put a what you call it up there. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would probably. Oh, or maybe a caramello. Oh man, I've not had a caramello in a long time. What about rollers? No, I prefer the caramel. Like the the, car- the caramel in the Rolos are, is a little too chewy. Yeah, anyways, no, you're right. Anyways, yeah. then <laughs> as they're walking away, uh, Max jumps out with a nice Mike Myers mask, and like I I couldn't tell, and I meant to look, and then I forget. That knife for a second looked real. That she was. Oh holding. yeah. Like it looked like it, and I could be wrong, but I want. I feel like she had a legit huge knife with her but she said she scares like the shit out of him and was it lucas it was... who screamed was that lucas yes that was lucas yeah and, she, and then she makes fun of him because he quote screamed like a girl it was the 80s though so she could have had a real dangerous knife yeah i know her. that's that's what i was thinking in my mind i was like yeah but this was the 80s so maybe she did really have that knife because it that was a big knife if she did I mean, if you were going as a soldier, your dad would give you a gun, right? Uh, I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. That wouldn't happen. At least I hope that wouldn't happen. Uh, and then it goes back to Hopper, and he uh, he gets scared again. Another kid scares him. This one had a gun, a fake gun. And then he realizes that it's past 5.15. Elle's not going to be happy. Or was it the other way around? Did he realize it and then the care the he got scared? Well, I I realized it in my notes when they showed it outside and it was still dark. Okay, and then yeah, I was, the kid I was thinking it gun. doesn't get. I was thinking it doesn't get dark at five o'clock. You're pretty close. Not that uh, dark. Not that dark. But the fa- yeah, but the fact that it's dark means that it's way past. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, because you I can figured remember the kids in... all met up at 7. That's true. But he's way past. So he's at least two hours overdue. Yeah, so then he uh, he's tries to buy the the candy from the kid. He's like, hey, kid, give me your candy. And the kid's like, no. And he's like, how about now? I'm offering him five bucks. So I'll buy you And in the 80s, that would buy a lot of candy. Uh, Elle is watching Frankenstein in the meantime. And Hopper somehow signals, like, was, was that a telegraph? Yeah. I, no, it, looks, it was Morse. It, well, it was Morse code, but, like, the way he was transmitting the Morse code, I think, was probably through a telegraph. Like, because how else would he have gotten that to her? So the, is he has a telegraph line going to that cabin in the woods? No, I think it's wireless. <laughs> it's got to yeah. be wireless. 
Yeah. So yeah, he signals that he's going to be late, and then Elle flashbacks to walking in the snow, and that's when she finds the food and egos that Hopper leaves for her at the end of the first season. This just gave this left me with more questions. Like, how did he know to leave it there? Yeah, yeah. Why was he? Well, actually, never mind. It makes sense just if you just think about it, because the uh, hunter probably went to the cops and said, hey, some kid floated a log at my head. Yeah, true. I, I'll, okay, yeah, I'll give it. I'll I wonder, give it that was probably even mentioned in the first episode, too. Yeah, when... Uh, Brett Gelman is yeah, yeah, talking Brett to Gelman him. was in there. So, we kind of cut back to the, the trick-or-treating. Uh, and Lucas and Dustin are trying their best to appear cool and hip and with it. And they use... By acting like... Surfer dudes. Yeah, it's like totally tubular. No, it's totally tubular. No, no, it's like, oh, bro, I'm like totally tubular. Yeah, that part was great. It's, they just keep trying to like one up each other with it. But uh, what 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 is what is your word for what Mike is being? Oh, gr- a grumble puss. He's being a huge grumble puss. Uh, and, but he's he's not happy about Max being there, and he says that she's ruining the best night of the year. I think he's ruining the best night of the year. Yeah, he's by being a what do you call it? A grumble puss. There we go. I, just, <laughs> I was I was trying to see if I could get Kevin to say it one more time. What a grumble puss! <laughs> Thank you. So Will gets startled and scared, and uh, kind of finds himself in the upside down. Uh, and then the Thessal Hydra rises. And I'm going to keep calling it that until they call it something different. I was a little disappointed that it was a smoke monster. Yeah, yeah, this is a little bit too lost for me. Nah. But it's but it seems like it, it's actually more intimidating than the smoke monster from Lost. Why, because he doesn't make logging noises? Well, and you don't wonder, you don't wonder if they're dead the whole time? Spoilers for Lost? Well, that's not uh, that's not really a spoiler for Lost, but I mean they're not. They're not. Spo- that's no. a spoiler. That's a not. spoiler. But that's a, yeah, that's a spoiler for Lost. Anyway, so but uh, so he kind of will runs off to kind of hide from the monster, and eventually Mike finds him, and Mike says that he'll get him home. And at that point, Mike, I'm I'm sorry, Mike asks, Max asks, what's wrong with Will? And Dustin and Lucas kind of look at each other and as if to say, sister, do we have a story for you? Now, you think think that uh, they're going to be mad about the video camera? Well, that's uh, I just want to mention. So two things. One, do you think the video camera is in the upside down now? And two, if it is, do you think they're going to find it in a later episode and there's going to be footage of the new monster? Oh man, that would be that would that would be such a great way to do that. So it would turn out that he is actually going to the upside down all these times. Well, yeah. No, I, yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I kind of now that you bring that up, I kind of I kind of hope that's what's happening. Yeah, I do too. That uh, when when that happened, because that that was my first thought was, wait a sec. So is the camera there or not? You know. Yeah, because we don't see the camera again. And that the whole time I was thinking, I was saying, is, well, is it going to capture something? On are they going to get some footage or something? Or if never mind. No, that wouldn't work. Never mind. So the thistle hydra is what's killing all the pumpkins, right? It's got to be. I what think so. Be? Okay. So uh, Jonathan arrives at the party gets introduced to Samantha. And he notices uh, Nancy's getting crunk. Do you remember the name of the drink she was drinking? Punch bowl liquor? I don't know. She asked the guy what it was, and he said pure fuel. Oh, pure Pure fuel. fuel. Yeah, that's That's right. right. Pure fuel. Yeah, that was great. But yeah, she is trashed. Yeah, she is. And then Steve, being good guy, is like, no, you've had too much. And he's, like, trying to stop her, but, you know, she's drunk, so she doesn't want to stop drinking. Uh, And then he spills, well, she's trying to, like, pull the drink away, spills it all over her nice white uh, outfit there. And then 
they go. Everyone at the party stops and looks at her. Yeah. I felt like there should have been a, a record scratch. Like she should have bumped <laughs> right. into like a record player. No, no. What was that? Duran Duran, right? What was it? Uh, uh, maybe. I think so. Sure. It just kept on playing in the background. Which... I've I've not been I've not been as good about keeping notes of what songs are because they use a lot of music in this lot of licensed music. I think it was Girls on Film playing. Oh no! Yeah, Girls that is right. On... Yeah, it was. That is Duran Duran, right? Then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which again said in the first season, sent again for these two episodes. What great music! But anyways, they go up to the bathroom, and then drama ensues. He's she's trying to clean it off, and he's like, eh, "It's not gonna, it's not coming out." And then, and then she kind of uh, lets loose, and you know, kind of lets everything out about how she feels guilty, and then how everything's bullshit and she kind of says like you know like basically says like I'm pretending to love you essentially and then he's like what you don't love me and then just kind of leaves and storms out which you know a little understandable now they've made Steve a tragic character I know I did feel bad for him because I was like oh man Steve turned it around he was He's been like a good boyfriend and like he's just being a good guy now. He's just a good guy now. Good guy Steve. And then like gets that thrown at him. I think this may may force him to go back to the dark side. It might. Rejoin the jerk squad. With Billy. Oh god, let's hope not. That would be awful. So yeah, Will is trying to cut to Will trying to explain to Mike what he's been experiencing and seeing. Uh, and he explains that it's not the Demogorgon that he saw. And Mike kind of is trying to comfort him a little bit and says that, you know, Eleven would understand what's going on. And Mike explains that he still occasionally, he feels like he sees her. And then uh, another cut, which I guess would be to the same house, uh, but Jonathan uh, gets Nancy home and uh, makes sure that she gets into bed. Which I was sitting there thinking, oh my god, he's they're walking indoors. Her family is totally going to see the fact that she's completely wrecked. No, that didn't happen. But that that didn't happen at all. It was, which it's like, well, maybe the which made me think, well, maybe these parents really are oblivious. Well, I was probably reading an upside down newspaper. They'll know the following morning because she's going to be super hungover. Yeah, if Jonathan was a real good guy. He would have like left a gallon of water and a bottle of aspirin next to her door, next to her bed, and a Gatorade. Eat them electrolytes. You want to close this out, Kevin? Sure. Oh yeah, go ahead. Or, or well, whoever. Um... Yes, Kevin. Please do. <laughs> uh, Kevin. So yeah, after so after that, uh, we go back to uh, Hopper. He's back at his cabin, uh, doing his knock. So he uh, he's knocking on the door, uh, no response. And then uh, you know he, he a little bit like, oh, I'm gonna freeze to death. And then you hear the door unlock. So he he comes in, makes his way over to the bedroom, and kind of he's apologizing and stuff, trying to get her to come out. And you know you can kind of hear and see the light from the TV going on, um, but just other than that, just nothing. And so then you know he sits on the couch and does one of those, well, you know, I've got all this candy out here. I guess I'm just going to have to eat by myself trying to get her to come out, but she's she's not coming out because uh, then it goes to her just still flipping through channels and then um, cuts to uh, like a static channel, it, like back in the olden days when you couldn't get signal on something and, and it was just like the bars are static going on and covers her eyes and she goes into like her other place um, and then finds Mike. He's, you know, finds, sees him talking into the uh, walkie-talkie, you know, talking to her, quote-unquote talking to her. And then I'm I'm not sure... If there's any kind of interaction from there, like if she can actually do anything, because she says his name and then he looks up and he's like, L, like, 
almost like he sensed it or heard it kind of, you know? Um, and then she's like kind of slowly moving her hand like she's going to touch him and then he storms off because, you know, grumble puss. Well, this explains why he's a grumble puss. Well, we know why he's a grumble puss, but it no, still doesn't been, detract he's that. He's being haunted. <laughs> he's Literally. Being haunted. It's like ghost. Um, <laughs> but then uh, the, the final final scene, back to Dustin again. And getting home again, getting off his bike, starting to head inside, and back to the trash can, you hear some kind of, you know, some moving around and some kind of, like animal-ish noise, and he, so, he takes out his, like, proton pack, like, it's gonna do something. If I was him, I would have booked it. Like, you could poke it in the eye. I would have ran inside, I would have been like, what's that? Nope. Went inside, locked the door, that's that. But no. Nope. I mean, considering he knows there's things like the demigorgon yeah. running around. Even if not, like, what if it's like a, a, a raccoon or, or a possum or skunk or something? I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to get rabies or sprayed or, you know, whatever. Book it out of there. So he, for some reason, makes his way over and then takes the lid off. They don't show what it is, and then it just goes, holy sh, and then end credits. So what do you guys think it is? I don't know. I I think it might be a fake something, but I don't know. It's a baby Demogorgon. That's that's what I thought, but at the same time, it's like, it's like maybe they're just trying to trick you and be like, "Oh, uh, we're gonna get everyone at the end of this show or, or this episode. We're gonna make them think it's something when it's just like a baby his cat is gonna or be something." You his know? cat is gonna be in the trash can giving birth to a, a litter of kittens. Yeah, or it's it's more crows or something. It's a pumpkin, a, a rotting pumpkin. Yeah, <laughs> or it's the camera. The camera found its way into that trash can somehow. So yeah, that too much happened in this episode still just moving along i feel like for some reason we're gonna get hit with some good stuff next episode it was entertaining though it was it was a like fun episode for the most part yeah yeah yeah. i agree except you know grumble puss i mean we still haven't really we don't really know what's happening this season yet whereas last season we knew what was happening because you know will got taken in the very like opening scene and then the rest of the season was trying to get Will. And this, there's, they're just dealing with the ramifications of last season until something else pops off, which I feel is going to happen pretty soon. Uh, anything else you guys want to add before I wrap up? All right, thanks for listening. Uh, make sure you like us and subscribe and share us with other people. And also listen to the All Talk podcast where we talk about all the geek stuff and the geek box and comic conspiracy and manga machinations. And we'll see you next time.